I'm Rashmi, joined by my co-host, as always, Olivia. Yep, and today we're looking at one of the more lucrative investment options, which are hedge funds. Their name explains how the manager of the fund has a hedge bet by investing a portion of assets in the opposite direction of the fund's focus to offset any losses in core holdings. It's essentially a limited partnership of multiple private investors managed by professional fund managers. And usually institutional investors invest in this type of fund since they can charge higher fees than conventional funds. Yeah, and it's not even surprising that some of these hedge funds require a high minimum investment or a large net worth to even be eligible to be part of one. They're for the wealthy, which is all right because we are going to become the wealthy. That's a great mindset. Well, at least the cost usually pays off, since these funds are dedicated to achieving above average returns. They leverage high value assets and invest in derivatives, which are financial contracts also set on underlying assets or a benchmark like commodities. There's actually a really interesting method used to decide what fees apply to investors depending on the success of hedge funds. The 2 and 20 concept, which incentivizes managers to maximize returns to increase performance fees, but is somewhat of a safety net for investors at the same time. Yeah, so there's the initial 2% management fee, and then usually a 20 per- 20% performance fee out of all profits if the hedge fund turns out to be successful. But if it's not, there is no second fee. So it seems like a win-win scenario for investors since the hedge fund managers are extra incentivized to make a large profit since that increases their earnings as well, meaning investors are likely to be successful, and if they're not successful, they can expect not to be charged extra. Though it is worth mentioning that a 2% management fee is somewhat high already. Mutual funds usually falls up to 1.5%, but it's to be expected since hedge funds are often managing much higher value assets. Yes, and there are multiple types of hedge funds with different investment goals based on the type and what assets they contain. We'll just focus on the most common four types though. So global macro hedge funds are actively managed, attempting to profit from broad market swings. This could be a large economic or political event, such as a presidential shift that investors can expect to change policy on certain markets that will impact profit. An equity hedge fund, which can be global or national, invests in lucrative stocks while hedging against downturns in equity markets by shorting overvalued stocks or selling indices. They essentially take advantage of mispriced stocks as a safety net for if lucrative, which means often volatile as well, stocks end up being in a downturn. Relative value hedge funds exploit temporary differences in prices of related securities, taking advantage of price or spread inefficiencies. They focus on making the most profit possible by identifying possible gains in the current market. And activist hedge funds invest heavily in businesses and take actions to boost stock the price they have invested in. Basically, the fund takes a large amount of shares in the company, then uses that ownership as leverage to enact changes in the firm's management they expect to make profit off of. And all of these fund types are considered illiquid assets, with the end gains being the incentive for investing. Right. In spite of the high fees and hurdles to being part of one of these funds, they do manage some $4 trillion for wealthy investors across the world, with over 30,000 funds existing. And 65% of these funds are in the United States. And while each may have different strategies based on the specific group, there are a few common investment strategies for hedge funds. One of these strategies is actually originated from Alfred Winslow Jones, who established the world's first hedge fund. It's called the Long Short Strategy, where investors go long and short on competing companies within the same industry. What this means is that investors are able to minimize market exposure by taking a long position on stocks that are expected to appreciate and gain in value from being underpriced, and taking a short position on overpriced stocks by selling them. Another common strategy is a fixed income strategy, with the goal of providing a fixed income. 
Surprising, isn't it? <laughs> we love clear naming. That's why I love personal finance. These hedge funds focus on giving solid returns with minimal volatility, aiming for capital preservation more than capital gain. They're a method of ensuring that assets gain value instead of sitting around and gathering dust, but also keeping them from being exposed to a lot of risk. It's the safer strategy for hedge funds. What seems most risky to me are event-driven strategies, which take advantage of stock mispricing based on recent events. These funds take action based on current economic scenarios and look to gain profit from mispriced stocks. It does seem like a dangerous investment, highly dependent on the idea that the expected results from economic events happen. But we do know that all that matters in the end is the long-run success, and hedge funds can be very successful. Yeah, one of the top U.S. hedge funds is Bridgewater Associates, which has $124,317,200,000 worth of assets under its management. Silly enough, its headquarters are in Westport, Connecticut. It was founded in 1975 and has a strategy focused on investing in pure alpha and pure alpha major markets, and an all-weather strategy focusing on asset allocation. These strategies involve predicting macroeconomic trends with computer models and then managing securities accordingly. It works with an average annual return of 13%. That's not the only way that hedge funds are successful, though. Renaissance Technologies has $106,026,795,239 worth of assets under management. This company also uses models, specifically mathematical and statistical ones, as the basis for investment strategies. It has one of the best track records in history for the medallion fund run for employees under the company, too. Yeah, and a cool aspect of this is that hedge funds is that their investors can be pension funds or insurance companies that can have positive impacts on more everyday people, not just the ultra-rich who invest directly into hedge funds. Yeah, and another successful hedge fund is Citadel, which might ring a bell for many of you. Citadel has uh, valued $51,573,787,000 of assets under its management, usually investing in commodities, credit, convertibles, equities, global fixed income and macro, and global quantitative strategies. While hedge funds might seem somewhat out of reach, it's still interesting to see how they work and succeed for the investors. Though only the ultra-rich, accredited investors can directly invest. They use strategies and methods that can be applied by the rest of us as well. Exactly. That's all for this episode of Community Corner Podcast Personal Finance Edition. Thanks for tuning in. This is Olivia and Rashmi, cashing off.